Kung Fu Panda 4 includes Po trying to find a new replacement for the role of Dragon Warrior. The new villain, named the Chameleon, can summon villains from Po's past. Someone cooked here. The Kung Fu Panda trilogy is one of my favourite Hollywood trilogies of all time. Even if some of the movies stand out more than others, and by that I mean the first one is incredible, the second one is peak fiction, and the third one is... Good. Yeah, it's pretty good. 7 out of 10, 7 and a half of them in the mood. And as a whole, the trilogy is beautiful, and I'd be calling it a masterpiece if the third one was as good as either of the first two. But as it stands, it's still an incredible piece of filmmaking, and even the Chinese know it. Why can't we make what we want to make the way we want to make it? And do you know what else the Kung Fu Panda movies had? They had villains. Some of my favourite ever villains across animation, and maybe just some of my favourite villains across all time in general. And for what we're going to talk about today, oh that is important. And you know what else big popular trilogies have in common? Fourth movies. The kiss of death for a series in most occasions. Like, really, you can't often get much better than a whole trilogy's climax, can you? Pirates of the Caribbean 4 is the most hated of the series, the first three Transformers movies are guilty pleasures of mine, but the fourth one is just pure rubbish. The general consensus on Toy Story 4 seems to have gone from good to okay to easily the worst of the series over the last few years, and I don't even want to talk about Thor 4 or Terminator 4 or Men in Black 4 or The Matrix 4. You know what fourth movie I liked, though? Like, really liked? Like, it might just be my favourite in the series liked, maybe? Shrek 4. Disney tends to suck when it comes to sequels. DreamWorks does them spectacularly. Disney tends to suck when it comes to fourth instalments. DreamWorks has done them really well so far. Disney tends to suck when it comes to live action remakes. DreamWorks, please, I am begging you! The point to all this is, besides DreamWorks do what Nintendo doesn't, look I'm tired okay, is that if yet another follow up to one of my favourite franchises from a decade ago was announced, I would probably just roll my eyes, sigh, admit to myself it's probably going to be mid at best, and then buy the tickets anyway because yes I am part of the problem. But for Kung Fu Panda? I can't lie, even before the revealed description I had hope. Not much, just a little tingle in my belly that said, okay, okay, I will let them cook. I will let them cook. And now here we are today, with a general description of what the movie is about, and I'm here to tell you, that excitement is building. Look, one of my favourite tropes in storytelling is the return or revival of a past villain. When it's done right, when it's done right, it can make for a really excellent dynamic between our antagonist and our heroes. And it's sad that so many series do it so badly or just because of laziness. Sometimes there's an incredible villain return, and a really lame one in the exact same series. Sometimes it's the same damn character that gets both a really good and really bad resurrection. But all in all, I love returning villains when they're handled with respect. We get to see just how defeat might have changed them, and what they might do differently this time now that they know what they did before didn't work. And like I said, the dynamic with the hero and or the one that killed them will always be a highlight. Now the question is, why do I think this could work so well for Kung Fu Panda 4? Well, I mean, first and foremost these are all really good villains. Tai Lung is one of my favourite animated villains. Shen is one of my favourite villains in general, and Kai is very fun. Look, I'm a sucker for characters with chain weapons and his theme slaps, okay? So I'd be very excited to see them all again. But beyond that? Well, as I mentioned, one of the best parts about this trope is how the characters interact with the hero. And the Kung Fu Panda villains are perfect for this situation, because each of them treated Po completely differently. Tai Lung found him hilarious and pathetic, believing that any and all of the strength that he showed came from the scroll. Hmm? He's a panda. You're a panda. Even when proved unfathomably wrong. For Shen, you can make the argument that the main emotion he felt towards Poe was fear because of the prophecy. 
though there was definitely other elements of hate, confusion, amusement and sadistic pleasure. Hey, he's the best one, should have expected him to be the most complex. And even Kai has a very different approach. He actually genuinely respects the big fat panda, and if he wasn't obsessed with power, he actually seems like they could get on rather well. And it makes complete sense, as the quote unquote brother of Ugui himself, of course he wouldn't care about appearance and understand the warrior's spiritual value and sense. All this to say, this could make for some really excellent interactions between our hero and his villains. What Tai Lung might see is entirely different to what Shen or Kai might see, and vice versa. Even their fighting styles are completely different, and I'm telling you, if we get a 3v1 of them fighting Po at the same time, and yes, I understand that Tai Lung and Shen would realistically get their asses handed to them by now, but come on, they get power ups from the new villain or from the spirit world, easy as that. But yeah, if that happens, I'm sorry, that's gonna be peak fiction. Have you seen what DreamWorks are doing with their fight scenes recently? Like, oh my god, I'm completely going off tangent here. But if they go as hard with the battles in Kung Fu Panda 4 as they did with Puss in Boots 2, I mean, just look at this shit! I can 100% see the choreography and art direction translating beautifully over to the Panda series. I'd say they're halfway there with the Spirit World battles in 3. Anyway, back on track. The villains and their interactions. With Poe, of course, and maybe even with other characters that they have unresolved issues with, but also with each other. As I mentioned, these are wholly different characters, and I can't lie and say that seeing them bounce off each other would be an absolute treat. The dry wit of Shen with the more casual and cheerful sadism of Kai, and the arrogant brutality of Tai Lung, not to mention whatever the new antagonist will be. There's a lot to play with here, and it's always a huge treat to see villains bouncing off each other because they have such big personalities by design. But okay, there's more to a film besides the bad guys, even if they are indeed the best part, but that's besides the point. That's only half the description we've gotten. The other half? Well, I've not got as much to talk about, but I'm just as interested. Poe becoming a mentor figure was something that the third film did decently well, but his trainees were either some of the already best martial artists in the world, or a village of funny pandas, which did allow for some pretty good comedy and themes, but there's still a lot of room to explore. And from the sounds of it, he's going to have a single apprentice or prodigy, which sounds a lot more interesting with a lot more potential to deep dive into. It sounds like this movie is going to be the end of an era. Like, again, Kung Fu Panda 3 was good, but I'd say it definitely didn't feel like a conclusive ending in the same way that How to Train Your Dragon 3 did, or even Madagascar 3. That's another reason why I'm willing to give this movie a chance, to not call it a cash grab quite yet. If there's one thing I can give the eternally flip-flopping DreamWorks, when it comes to their series, is that they always stick the landing with a terrific finale that's extremely satisfying for the characters. And while the third installment in this trilogy handled that wrapping up, again, perfectly fine, some parts of it very good even, it definitely felt like there was something missing that wasn't in the others, or something more to go off of. Or maybe that's just me. Either way, are you looking forward to Kung Fu Panda 4? And are you looking forward to liking and subscribing? Because I would really appreciate if you could do that. Okay, sorry, anyway. Why or why not? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Went for a shorter video this time around, and not just because we have almost nothing to work with, because I could talk about this series for hours, but because, well, it's just not about an animated series by Disney, so I'm testing the waters to see how this does view-wise. Really hoping you all enjoyed, I had a lot of fun with this. Not much else to say other than, well, until next time friends!